two civilizations on opposite sides of the Pacific Ocean created a pyramid with the exact same features. One was created as a large temple complex for the first king of China and still sits fully intact today, but has been forbidden from opening or excavating since its construction in 210 BC. The second one is one of the largest pyramids in the world and was created by a lost civilization in the Americas that we know very little about. Upon excavation, archaeologists say they found the exact same thing that ancient Chinese texts say the first emperor's tomb had in it. Rivers and lakes of mercury, and a representation of the galaxies up above, thought to mimic the landscape and the layout of the realm of the dead. How could these precise similarities exist? Did the ancient Chinese travel to the Americas? What if I told you that their own history says they did? Our story begins in ancient China, towards the end of the 3rd century BC, with the victory of the Qin Empire over the other Chinese states during the Warring States period and the unification of China. For reference, this was the classical period in Greece. Hellenization had spread throughout much of the world with the conquest of Alexander the Great about a hundred years earlier in 323 BC. And the early Roman Republic was beginning to expand. Just to the south of China and India, the great ruler Ashoka of the Mauryan Empire had recently died in 232 BC, and had spread Buddhism to much of Asia, including China, during its lifetime. Although China during this time of the Qin Dynasty was predominantly Taoist. In Central Asia, the Scythians were beginning to organize into large civilizations, and spread their culture all the way from Mongolia to Europe. Across the water in the Americas, groups like the Olmecs, Maya, and Zapotec were flourishing in Central America and Southern Mexico. To the north of them, the mound building societies were in full force, settling mostly along the Mississippi River. In the southwest, the now extinct Anasazi people inhabited their cliffside dwellings and city complexes in the deserts of North America. And of course, small hunter gatherer tribes flourished along the west coast all the way up into Alaska. Down in South America, cultures in Peru had been thriving for thousands of years. The Chavin, Moche, and Nazca were building their large city complexes and practicing a religion similar to the later Inca people. In China, the first dynasty emperor ruled for a short 15 year reign, from 221 to 207 BC. But during that time, he completely changed China unifying their culture and centralizing power in the region. He is credited as being the first to construct parts of the Great Wall, as well as many of the great palaces and buildings across China. Many say he was the richest man in the world during his lifetime, due to his centralized authority and lucrative trade routes that extended all the way to Europe and the Near East via the Silk Road, and East to Korea and Japan and south into southeastern Asia and India, and possibly even further out into the Pacific Ocean. Now, since the conquest of the states of China, the emperor, Qin Shi Huang, lives a lavish lifestyle, possessing many servants and women, and having authority over all the regions. It's believed by some that he considered himself to be ruler over the entire earth, and he just considered people outside of China as barbarians. Now, as many wealthy people in the world are doing today, when you have so much money and power, you begin to fear what you cannot control, namely death. And you begin to search for some way to overcome this problem. For some, it might be religion, but for others, that's not enough. They want to find a way to live forever. And that's exactly what happened to Qin Shi Huang. He feared death so much it drove him mad. So he filed a decree to every scholar, magician, alchemist, monk, and wise man in China to drop everything and work on finding the elixir of life. 
Archaeologists have actually found some of these slips with the written decree on them. Some wrote back saying, they have not yet unlocked the secret. One sent an herb from a local mountain. But eventually the emperor found a man he believed could actually have found the secret of immortality. A man by the name of Shu Fu, who tells him that he knows where the eight immortals from Chinese mythology reside. We are told in the ancient Chinese text, the book of Shi Zhu Ji, that Shu Fu described three islands that exist somewhere east of China. The three islands of the eight immortals from mythology. The main one being Peng Glai, the second Fang Zhang, and the third Ying Zhou, each with a large mountain on them. And a magical tree grew there that was taller than all other trees on earth, known as the Fu Song tree. Now the emperor has unified the whole area within the seas, making it unto provinces and districts, and bringing peace to all under heaven. He has shed light on the ancestral temples, embodying the way, enacting virtue, and fulfilling his exalted title. His various officials joined together to praise the merit and virtue of the August Emperor, inscribing it on metal and stone so that it may be a model and a standard. After the stone had been set up, a native of the Qi named Shu Fu and others submitted a memorial saying that in the midst of the sea were three spirit mountains named Peng Glai, Fang Zhang, and Ying Zhou, with the immortals living on them. They asked that they be allowed to fast and purify themselves, and to go with a group of young boys and girls to search for them. The emperor thereupon ordered Chu Fu to gather a group of several thousand young boys and girls, and set out to sea in search of the immortal men. In another text, the book of Shi Ji, it says, In earlier times others tried to reach this land. They reported that all living creatures on the island were white, and their palace at the summit of the largest mountain on the main island of Peng Glai was pure gold, and it was eternally summer. This is a very popular subject in Chinese mythology, and I recommend you research these eight immortals. I'll have to make a video dedicated to them in the future, but after the emperor received Chu Fu's message, he immediately put together an expedition to travel east to find these lands from mythology. And what is east of China? The king knew full well of Korea and Japan from his many trade routes, so it had to be beyond that, out into the Pacific Ocean. This was a massive undertaking and the emperor spared no expense. Here's an artist's depiction of the ship. As Shu Fu set out on his expedition, the emperor became more paranoid about his death. There had already been attempts on his life, and he knew he could trust no one. He was so anxious he had walls built on all the pathways in the palace, so he'd never have to walk out exposed. Every window was covered with a curtain, and anyone who mentioned the emperor's location was executed. He suspected everyone of deceiving him, even the monks and alchemists that he was contracting to work on his elixir of life. To test their claims of magical powers to be sure they weren't deceiving him, the emperor took several of them from their homes and buried them alive. If they truly are as skilled as they claim in the mystic arts, they will be able to survive, he thought. After many years of searching for the land of the immortal, Shu Fu returned empty-handed. He said he found the way, but he was being obstructed by a sea monster. So the emperor, anxious to find the land of the immortals, accompanied Shu Fu. And when they reached the sea monster, Qin Shi Huang shot at it with a repeating crossbow, so they could reach the sacred island of Peng Glai. In the records of the Grand Historian, it states, Shu Fu and the other magicians, who had set out to sea in search of the herbs of immortality, had passed several years without finding anything consuming huge sums of money. Fearing punishment, they deceived the emperor by saying the herbs of Peng Glai can surely be obtained, but always there's a large fish that causes difficulty, and therefore we are unable to reach the island. We would like to request that a skilled archer be assigned to accompany us, so that if we sight any fish, he can shoot them with a repeating crossbow. The first emperor dreamed that he was struggling with an ocean god, who had the shape of a human being. When he consulted an academic, 
who was an interpreter of dreams. He said, The water god himself cannot be seen, but he may manifest himself in the form of a large fish or dragon. Now your majesty conducts sacrifices with great diligence, and yet this evil god has appeared. It must be driven away so that the good gods can appear. The emperor ordered those who set out to sea to carry along equipment for seizing a gigantic fish. He himself carried a repeating crossbow and watched for a great fish to appear so that he could shoot it. He saw several huge fish and shot and killed one of them. He then followed along the shore, turned west, and he had gone as far as Pingyuan Ford when he took ill. Eventually some of the legends from later Chinese writers say they did reach a new land to the east. The people they found there were very holy and understood the way of the Tao in a deep way. They followed the old teaching and had great temples of gold and silver. But the people here refused to give immortality to the emperor. Instead, they simply gave him some of their knowledge and wisdom. Upon his return, he died shortly after at the young age of 49. But before his death, he had the most extravagant and massive tomb complex created for him under extremely specific instructions. And this pyramid tomb of the first emperor of China matches what we find in Teotihuacan, Mexico, perfectly. In this region, the Mayans and Olmecs were inhabiting their cities, further south in southern Mexico towards the Yucatan and Guatemala. And the Teotihuacans were at the height of their civilization north of them about 30 miles from modern-day Mexico City. They were the dominant power in the region, and were a separate culture from the Mayans altogether. You can tell just by looking at their pyramids that they had different traditions and styles. We actually know very little of their society, as they are thought to have died out before Spanish arrival, and their main city of Teotihuacan was absorbed into the other empires of the later Mayans, Toltec, and Aztec peoples. But at their height around the same time as Qin Shi Huang, they were great. The proof is in the gigantic pyramids, one of which is the largest in the world, the Pyramid of Cholula. Scholars tell us we have no idea who built these. They just call them the Teotihuacans. But Aztec records tell us something different. Teotihuacan in Aztec means birthplace of the gods. They say that these two sites of Teotihuacan and Cholula were built by a people known as the Kina Metzen, who preceded the arrival of the Aztec in the area. In these Aztec writings, the Kina Metzen were a race of giants that had great knowledge of civilization and architecture, but they angered the gods with their impiety and were taken out in a flood, leaving Teotihuacan and Cholula buried and abandoned. But at their height, they were a great empire, and their king was extremely knowledgeable and wise, and constructed these two sites using advanced knowledge of the movements of the stars in relation to the earth itself. Some say this is where the famous Mesoamerican calendar originated and their knowledge of pyramid building. If the Chinese were exploring the Pacific coast, this would be the area they'd be drawn to. This was the largest, most incredible site in the Americas and every tribe from the Canadian Pacific down to Peru would know of its existence. Maybe these were the three mountains, and maybe the sacred giant Fusong trees were the sequoia, just to the north in Southern California, which scientists say actually might have extended further south and grew on the coastal regions of Western Mexico and Baja California. Watermarks found on the walls at Teotihuacan indicate that massive water rituals took place here, where they would reenact their creation myth by flooding the entire complex, and the three main pyramids were meant to represent the mountains or primordial mounds that first emerged after the flood, just like the Chinese legend says about the three mountain islands where the eight immortals reside. But where's the evidence between this meaning of the Qin and the Teotihuacans? Well, when Qin Shi Huang returned to China, he created a pyramid tomb that is an exact copy of the pyramids at Teotihuacan. Let me show you. So the 20 square mile tomb complex of Qin Shi Huang is a huge pyramid in Xi'an, China. This is where the famous terracotta army was found, 
buried surrounding the pyramid itself. 8,000 uniquely made clay warriors, each has distinct facial features and were once adorned with colors and accompanied by chariots and other structures, most of which have since decomposed. There's even an entire section of hundreds of animal figurines. The actual pyramid is said to be hollow, containing the sarcophagus of the emperor, as well as much of his valuables and treasures, and many of his wives and servants were entombed in there with him, as well as a perfect landscape built onto the floor as a map of China, complete with mountains and lakes and rivers of mercury, and a perfect representation of the night sky on the ceiling. However, the pyramid itself has remained sealed since 210 BC and is forbidden from excavation to this day. We only know what's inside from ancient writings. In the ninth month, the first emperor was interred at Mount Li. When the emperor first came to the throne, he began digging and shaping Mount Li. Later, when he unified the empire, he had over 700,000 men from all over the empire transported to the spot. They dug down to the third layer of the underground springs and poured in bronze to make the outer coffin, replicas of palaces, scenic towers, and the hundreds of officials, as well as rare utensils and wonderful objects, were brought to fill up the tomb. Craftsmen were ordered to set up crossbows and arrows, rigged so that they would immediately shoot down anyone attempting to break in. Mercury was used to fashion imitations of the Hundred Rivers, the Yellow River and the Yangtze River, and the seas, constructed in such a way that they would seem to flow. Above were representations of all the heavenly bodies, below the features of Earth. Oil was used for lamps, which was calculated to burn for a long time without going out. Now in Mexico at Teotihuacan, we thought this pyramid was completely different. Maybe they look kind of similar or have a similar outer shape, but nothing more than that. Until 2003, when a sinkhole opened up at the site. This is from The Guardian. In 2003, a tunnel was discovered beneath the Feathered Serpent Pyramid in the ruins of Teotihuacan, the ancient city in Mexico, undisturbed for 1800 years. The sealed off passage was found to contain thousands of extraordinary treasures lying exactly where they had first been placed as ritual offerings to the gods. Items on earth include greenstone crocodile teeth, crystals shaped into eyes, and sculptures of jaguars ready to pounce. Even more remarkable was a miniature mountainous landscape, 17 meters underground with tiny pools of liquid mercury representing lakes. The walls of tunnels were found to have been carefully impregnated with powdered pyrite or fool's gold to give them the effect in firelight of standing under a galaxy of stars. The tunnel was chanced upon by Mexican archaeologist Sergio Gomez Chavez, who after days of heavy rain noticed that a sinkhole, a danger to tourists, had opened up near the foot of the feathered serpent pyramid. He shone a torch, but could not see, only darkness. So he tied a rope around his waist and was lowered by workers down to the hole, which to his surprise he realized was a perfectly cylindrical shaft. The rich array of objects Gomez Chavez brought up from the passage, the large spiral shells, beetle wings arranged in a box, hundreds of metal spears, was left there as treasure to appease the gods. But it also seems that the tunnel, with its pyrite galaxy and liquid mercury lakes, was itself a recreation of the underworld. Most remarkably, at the end of the passage, Gomez Chavez's team uncovered four green stone statues. They were wearing garments and beads and their open eyes would have shone with minerals. Two were still in their original positions, leaning back and apparently gazing up at the axis where the three planes of the universe meet. These are the founding shamans of Teotihuacan, who guided pilgrims to the sacred place. They carried bundles of sacred objects used to perform magic, including pendants and pyrite mirrors, which were seen as portals to another realm. So these two pyramids, built on opposite sides of the world, have the exact same mercury lakes and mountainous landscape 
and stars up above. Oh, and the way these two cultures actually obtained the mercury was the exact same process. They would take cinnabar and heat it up and it would turn to mercury. In fact, the famous mercury pills Qin Shi Huang was taking from his alchemist that may have been what killed him was cinnabar. And this mineral is used all over Mesoamerica. Researchers believe they had a problem with mercury poisoning because they find cinnabar vessels and jewelry at many Mayan and Aztec sites. There's one Mayan site further south called Palenque, where the famous ruler Pakal is buried, and his wife's burial is covered in red cinnabar mercury powder. It is known as the Red Queen's Tomb. Here's her funerary mask, and I think it kind of looks Chinese. And in China, cinnabar has been used as an artistic medium since Neolithic times. Actually, we can point to a lot of weird similarities between the Chinese and Mesoamerican cultures. Just look at their veneration of the dragon or serpent. No other society in the Americas venerated the serpent like the Mesoamericans. Almost every artwork and temple is covered in these long Chinese-like serpents. Even the Ouroboros symbol of the dragon eating its tail which is an extremely old symbol in China, is found at an Aztec site. And there are hundreds of artifacts we could point to that look similar to each other as well. And then look at their calendar. Both based on the procession of the zodiac, and both venerate similar animals to represent these zodiacs. And nobody knows how the Mesoamericans came up with this stuff. I could spend an entire video just showing you similar artifacts and artworks, but that will have to be a video all on its own. So, what do you think? Did Chinese travelers from the Qin Empire really make it to the Americas? And why are these pyramids so similar? If you want to watch these videos ad-free, go check out our Patreon. It's very cheap, only $3, and you'll be helping support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.